All right, we are checking out uh, Original Gangsters by Ben Westoff. It's a really good book. It's an audible. It's an audio book on Audible. If y'all want to go check it out, uh, we're gonna check out this uh, excerpt from the book, and I'm gonna come back with my reaction. Hit that thumbs up button, guys. Oh snap! Sorry about that, y'all. Wait a minute. Let's play it. With disrespect and bitches, Damn. he added to Spin, prompting the question, "What's the difference between a bitch and a woman?" A woman is a woman. A bitch is someone who carries herself in a stuck-up way. A bitch is someone who fucks everybody except me. Like Andre Young, Eric Wright hurt women in real life. His girlfriend, Tracy Jernigan, told me he once shot her with a BB gun. Similar to the time she smashed up his BMW after finding him with another woman. She again came to his house and suspected him of cheating, she said. He told her to leave and she was returning to her car when he came outside, armed, she said, adding that she believed he was just trying to scare her when he pulled the trigger. But the pellet hit her in the head, and she went to the emergency room. Wright didn't accompany her to the hospital. Mm. A doctor was forced to cut the pellet out, she said. NWA affiliate DJ Speed corroborated the rough outlines of her story. Lisa Johnson, the mother of three of Dr. Dre's children, who says Dre beat her, also accused Easy of beating her. She told me that while she was seeing Dre in the mid-80s, a friend of hers was dating Easy. <laughs> the four of them were planning to go to Magic Mountain one day, Johnson said, when the two women happened to drive by in a car in Compton, inhabited by Easy and the mother of one of his children. Johnson's friend was not happy to see Easy with another woman, and she hopped out of the car. Easy's two love interests began arguing. And all hell broke loose, Johnson said. Though she said the whole thing was merely a chance encounter, Easy seemed to believe Johnson brought her friend to the scene to start shit, she said. He came over to the car where I was and started fighting me and punching me in my nose, Johnson said, adding that her injuries were so bad that she ended up at a Culver City hospital. Johnson's aunt, who asked her name not to be used, said she arrived to the hospital to find her niece's face swollen. Mm. She was at my house for weeks, could barely walk. In a 1993 Howard Stern interview, Easy himself discussed beating a woman, kicked her ass for doing scandalous things. America gets foot loose. These incidents weren't publicly known at the time of N.W.A. and Easy es rise, but their lyrics nonetheless put them in the cultural crosshairs. Not long after the start of Reagan's second term in 1985, the major record labels agreed to self-apply parental warning stickers on their albums, as advised by Tipper Gore's Parents Music Resource Center, a committee organized to save the children from naughty... That thumbs up button, guys, we get a chance. That thumbs up button. This is crazy, ain't it? Naughty music. Straight out of Compton had the sticker and its second song was printed as Blank the Police. <laughs> At this point, the country got all footloose. Pop artists across the spectrum were jailed for indecent performances, including Skid Row's Sebastian Bach, Bobby Brown, and LL Cool J. An Arkansas sheriff pulled heavy metal and hip-hop tapes from a Walmart. Guar was told not to swear in concert. Dead Kennedy's frontman, Jello Biafra, had his home raided by the LAPD and was charged with obscenity for a graphic poster included in his band's album, Frankenchrist. The charges were later dismissed. In 1989, Gore and her parents' Music Resource Center colleague, Susan Baker, Treasury Secretary James Baker's wife, equated rap with rape in a piece for Newsweek. Discussing the phenomenon of wilding, they noted that the teenaged accused rapists of a Central Park jogger could later be heard in lockup, singing a high-on-the-charts rap song about casual sex. Wild thing. Tone Loke's track has nothing to do with rape. Perhaps most notorious was the McCullough Spawned group Two Live Crew, now based in Miami. They came under fire for the sexual nature of their 1989 album, As Nasty As They Wanna Be. A U.S. District Court judge deemed songs like Me So Horny obscene, leading to arrests of both a Fort Lauderdale store owner and the group itself, following a performance. 
They were later vindicated by the Supreme Court, and the album sold briskly. Plenty of people balked at N.W.A., from squeamish mothers confiscating their kids' tapes to the police who refused to work N.W.A. concerts. But many liberals were similarly aghast at the group's non-politically correct themes and imagery, conquering and degrading women, crushing adversaries. There is an element of documentary realism about N.W.A.'s music, wrote Frank Owen of Spin in 1990, but that is largely overshadowed by the gleeful delight the band takes in demonstrating their supposed toughness. In reality, N.W.A. have more in common with a Charles Bronson movie than a PBS documentary on the plight of the inner cities. In the world N.W.A.'s records described, all men were amoral brutes and self-loathing thugs who reveled in getting drunk and murdering one another, wrote journalist John Mendelssohn. Had virulent white supremacists ghost-written their stuff for them, who would have been able to tell the difference? That's crazy. Um, you know what? I just like to say this, man. Hit that thumbs up button, too, guys. Um, I was a big NWA fan. I was a little, I was a little kid when that album came out. The first one came out. I was in the elementary school. I think I might have been like in the fourth or third grade. But my sister, who was a teenager, her friends had that album. And I remember hearing it. I was like, wow. You know, I was, just in it, just and just the the pure sheerness of just I'm a little kid that comes from this family and it, it, it kind of keep you know my family wasn't bougie but we we wasn't really good so to hear all this cussing and effing and this and that I thought that stuff was exciting as a kid like ooh they said this and do this to the woman and this I'm like wow but I look back at it that was you know just like what they were saying. In NWA music and a lot of this gangster rap music, you listen to it and you was like, a Klansman can write this same music and you would not tell the difference. That's what I know this music now with hip hop, the way things are going now with hip hop, it's all about being gangster. And I think NWA, you know, I remember I, I remember I had a friend of mine uh, who said that he went over to Europe. I forgot what part, but he was somewhere out of the country. And he was in this country where uh, they didn't really get, you know, they just knew black people from media. So when he went to this other country, he met this one dude and he said that, you know, he was, you know, grew up in the country. He was like, oh, so he heard him talk. He's like, oh, you're from America. What part of, of America are you from? Now, you know, this is a black man, young black man. He was like, oh, I'm from Los Angeles. He was like, oh, so you a gangster, huh? But you a blood or a crip? You know, you rap? He automatically just went to you a rapper, you a gangster. And I think that's old to end the NWA, you know, you, you, Negroes with attitudes. That was pretty much a billboard to the world showing that, hey guys, look, all black men are like this. We thought it was just some jamming music. We thought it was cool. And the whole time it's propaganda to make us look bad and look what we have today. You know what I'm saying? They think every brother's a thug and all the girls want a thug and I'm a, I'm a thug this, I'm a thug that, you know, thug life. We, You know, now to the point where if you're not that, people looking at you sideways, even our own kind. Oh, you a weirdo. Oh, you lame. You not you ain't never been in jail. Oh, you lame. <laughs> like for real. Like, so I was saying what, what we thought was cool wasn't really cool. What y'all think, man? Leave your comments, subscribe to Charles and Israel. Check out this book, Two Original Gangsters, on ben, by Ben Westall. On, um, it's on uh, Audible. I got something to read. Are you take Looking for a professional photographer for your next big event? Need video of your special day? Then look no further. For $100 an hour, have a professional photographer or videographer shoot your wedding, birthday party, quinceanera bar mitzvah, or bat mitzvah anniversary party or whatever your special occasion may be. Highlight your event with professional, crisp, photos and video. Check out Charles Arnes Photography on Instagram as well as book us for your next event. Must live in the Southern California area.